Hi, my name is Josh Kim. I'm the director of How to Win at Checkers Every Time. Um, this is my first feature film, and the story is about an older brother who starts to teach his younger brother, um, you know, how to be a man, how to be an adult, right before he, the older brother has to go for the military draft lottery in Thailand. Okay, welcome to the Berlin Hour oh. and to the Teddy Awards. Is this your first time in Berlin, or? Oh, no, I, I've been here before, been but not before. to Berlin LA. Not to the festival. Yeah. So this is, this is your first time officially showing a film, or your film yeah. at the festival. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, maybe we can start talking a little bit about uh, Ek, the prota protagonist. Right. Um, because when I was watching the film yesterday, I thought he is bearing so... Or he has to take care of so many things in his life so early. He's kind of being a, a father or representing a father figure to his younger brother. He's a lover. He's a sex worker too. He, you know, he's young himself. Um, what, what does he represent to you? What kind of personal character is he? I mean, there are, there, there are these people, like, you know, sometimes, like, our parents, not unless, like, right now, me and you maybe can do, like, jobs that we like to do, things that, we, you know, things that we love to do, right? But sometimes it's our, like, parents are really worked hard, that maybe they didn't do something that they loved, but it's something that they did it for, like, so that we, our children, you know, could do something that we love. So it's sometimes it's like he gave up so much, right? He had to sacrifice, he had to quit school, you know, and become responsible, make money. So he represents this kind of like, uh, you know, these people who kind of like sacrifice, who give up stuff mm -hmm. and become responsible adults in the world. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I also see that, you know, it's like my older brother as well. Mm -hmm. right. Do you see parallels? Yeah, actually, one of the reasons I really was attracted to this story is because I saw my older brother in this, you know, character Ek. Right. How did how how was your relationship to your brother? Like what what? How would he describe it? He's not he's nine years older, so actually I felt like a second father. Okay. To he that he is like a second father to me. Okay. Right. So actually, it was really easy to relate to him and the character Ek. Mm -hmm. And when we did the voiceovers, I kind of I knew how, what to write. Mm -hmm. And it's just like I would just think about my brother, and then like okay, right. Because I think there was one part where he's like, you know, Ek, my older brother always knew what to buy me for my birthday in the voiceover. Okay. And I was like, my brother always knew what to get me. Like, my parents would buy me, like, <laughs> I don't know, like, underwear. <laughs> okay. They're very practical things. <laughs> yeah. No. But then, like, my brother would, like, knew exactly what I wanted. Okay. Yeah, so those things were really easy to write. Okay. So you earlier said that this film is based on a short story. Maybe you can elaborate on that. Yeah. Moment. So actually, I was in Korea, and I was listening to NPR. And National, I, Public Radio National Public Radio in the States, yeah. yeah. Radio and um, they did an interview with the author, and he was just really well spoken. And I was like, wow, I just, I just want to, like, let's. And he read excerpt of the book, mm -hmm. and I said, oh, this sounds really interesting. So I got the book, I bought it, and while I was reading it, I, one of the stories I felt like I just had watched a movie after I read it. It was so cinematic, it was very visual. I could smell, I could feel, I could, like, mm -hmm. yeah, taste things. Mm -hmm. It felt like I had, like, licked. The color off a of film strip or something. Wow. Yeah. Then I was like, oh, I really want to, you know, develop this into a film. So I just like, I just looked at the back and I just made a cold call to the publisher and they responded and said, actually, the film rights are available if you want. Wow. I think I was 26 years old at that time, and uh, yeah, we negotiated a contract and they were really open, and so yeah, started from there. So did uh, sexuality already play a role in that short story? Not at that, all, actually. Is that something you, okay, you, you included or implemented? Right, time? actually. Did you know that, actually? No, did I didn't. No, it was a question. I was because I wanted to, I definitely want to talk about the, the sexual aspect and his sexuality, but I, uh, I didn't know if it was part of the short story, too. No, it, there wasn't. There was straight. Because okay. actually, one of the short stories is called Draft Day. It's about two best friends who go to the draft together. Okay. And, um, but, you know, in the film, I made them gay. I was sorry, okay. gay boyfriend. I mean, the boyfriends. Yeah. yeah. And um, I felt one way. I mean, that helped it as a plot device, you know, to make like this betrayal later on stronger, because mm -hmm. it's not just best friends that kind of betrayed each other. It's like lovers that betrayed each other. Mm -hmm. um, but then at the same time, you know, I'm gay, and I would definitely, I've, you know, it's like I want to write characters that I can relate to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how? Because I, I really think it's. I was watching it yesterday, and I. I thought what was so interesting is that um, it's not a dominant thing. It's very, it's a very natural kind of like representation of their like sexuality, and there is problems with the relationship. Mm -hmm. 
but it's not connected to the sexual orientation or whatever. It's just you know a class thing, I think. Or um, and and was it important to you to kind of like um, just represent it in a really you know authentic and not like super excited or whatever way? It's just a yeah. It was very important to me actually yeah. as a filmmaker. Or even just as a film viewer, I remember like in, 2000, in the 2000s, I would watch films like, have you heard Big Eden or the, um, Closet's St Family Stone? Yes. Do you know Family yes, Stone? Yes, yes, And yes. do you know how no, people... I, no, I don't. I've gotten Big okay, Eden. Okay, but Big actually... Eden. No, Big Eden. I don't know Family Stone. Okay, for Big Eden, let, let's say you're like an artist in New York, you're out, you know, everyone yes. accepts you, but then when you go home to your small hometown... It's a big contract, yeah. Yeah, and then so this character who goes back from New York to his small hometown, He's in the closet again, and he's worried. Oh, what if people find out? But then, actually, people do find out. These old, you know, grandma, these old women. But instead of like having this negative response, they're like, "Oh, we need to get him a boyfriend." I was like, "Wow, why? Why couldn't you this never be like? That, yeah, yeah, why could this should? This is how the world should be." Yes. And I felt like this yes. is one thing that film, as a medium, can do. We can show people that we can create a space that doesn't actually exist right yeah, now, absolutely. you know, but actually show people, wow, you know, this is possible. Mm -hmm. And I really, that was one thing we designed from the very beginning that it was not an issue. I think there were really, really, um, really well-known screenwriters who read it and said, you know what, if you want more conflict um, in the story, just make the gay thing an issue. <laughs> you know, make the aunt, you know, say something about it or make the younger brother discover that his brother is gay. And I think, no, I was like, no, from the very beginning, the first scene is like his brother just saying matter-of-factly, as if it's like, that's my brother's girlfriend, or this mm -hmm. is my brother's boyfriend, you know? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just wanted to let people know, like, he's fine, this 11-year-old boy is fine with that. Or that's just how it is, so. And it, it, it really, really works very well. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but how would you describe the general situation in Thailand? Is that like um, an authentic representation, or is it uh, okay, a little yeah. more complex? That's a good question. <coughs> um, even though Thailand's more open to like sexuality than other countries, uh, I was very surprised a lot of my friends are not even out to their parents. Who are based in, in Thailand? Yeah, who are Thai. Or, or Thai. Yeah, who are based in Thailand, who are Thai. So um, even though like you know Thailand is you know more open, this is still a bit a small jump, you know, mm -hmm. it's a small jump. Mm -hmm. But yeah, because these people how, live in the countryside as well. Okay. Yeah. How did the uh, the cast deal with with the with the topic? And was it did you have to discuss it or was it just? I think um, like because the scenes are pretty <laughs> explicit. <laughs> I assume. Explicit. Or not, I'm not super explicit, but they're like, you know, there's a lot of phys physical oh, yeah. physicality going on. I think like some things that I thought some of the actors would have trouble doing were not the things that like um, they told me later that they were actually going to have trouble doing. We had a meeting about it and um, like some, any like, anything without, without clothes, mm -hmm. they were fine with. Mm -hmm. And especially, like, there's a masturbation scene, and it's like they're fine with that. And actually, the guy was like, "Oh, I actually, I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get some release." Yeah. <laughs> so but, it was a real one. No. Okay. <laughs> but um, I think the kissing scene was the hard, the hardest one. Okay. Yeah. Actually, that I didn't realize that. Did you rehearse it, or did you talk about it? We what did. We the... did rehearse. We, we, we rehearsed a lot that scene. Maybe too how, much. How do you rehearse that? <laughs> You go into a dark room, <laughs> I don't know, you talk about your feelings, you know, this is what I'm afraid of, what are you afraid of? Oh, I'm afraid of this. And then, like, you're holding hands while you do that. We actually had an acting coach come in. So as, that's, really, that's, a, that's a technique to, let, to get to that, that intimate kind of like... Yeah, let them get closer yeah. first, let them trust each other. You know, you do like yeah. tr trust building. Right, yes. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it was overall for the relationship overall, but also especially for those kissing scenes because those were really important. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make it look real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were real, believable. Yeah. Um, have you have you screened it or showed it in Thailand at all, or uh, just among Thai friends? Just friends. They love it. <laughs> they like it. Yeah. How do you think the gen do you, will you have the chance to present it to like a larger audience? Yeah, we got offers. So um, uh, we we were actually Berlin is our first festival. Mm -hmm. It's the first screening in you know in the world. So um, no one has actually seen it in Thailand yet. Mm -hmm. So but right before we left, we showed it to some distributors and they really liked it. So so they. We just have to make a decision now. Wow. So, what is your what's your dream or your vision? Where do you want it to be played, and what do you is do you have even some political? Is there some political activism behind it, or is it more of a of a beautiful story you wanted to tell and you know just encourage people? All of the above. 
Mm -hmm. I think one thing I realized um, that I, I made a short documentary in research in preparation for this. Mm -hmm. It was called Draft Day. It's about I followed two transgender girls on the day of their draft mm -hmm. to see what happens to them mm -hmm. because the laws have been changing in, in regards to transgender. In Thailand or in the States? In, uh, in Thailand. Th okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know, the States doesn't have the draft or like lottery. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I, and also I had never seen a draft before. Yes, so, it's a very, it's a, it's almost a ritual. It's very ritualistic. Yeah, and actually, yeah, it's actually more fun than I thought it would be. It's like a football game when I went there. <laughs> people are screaming, people are laughing. And why do why do those soldiers hold the or like um, almost hug those men while they are they afraid they're going to run away or like pass out or like I was. They, 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 actually, people faint. Because of they're so nervous and like. Yeah, okay. it, because actually, while I was shooting the documentary, so many people actually at least three people fainted. On the stage, they, even, even if they get black, it's yeah. just like all that you know anticipation yeah. that builds up, and it's and just like, really okay. and there's so many people in the room usually, and it's like very stuffy, and uh, so many people faint. So there's actually a, a nurse's table right there, right next to it, and they have these like no, <laughs> so I don't know what they do, but they yeah, like like what like pills or some. some no, they have something where they, they pop it up in front of them and they, and they oh, wake up. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, stimulator. Yeah. And then they wake up and they're like, hey, don't worry, you got black, you got black. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what is, and that's something I'm interested to, what is, um, is it better to get red? Is it, I mean, it depends on the personality, right? Who, whatever you want to do, or is it really something so um, socially, I don't know, important that you need to be drafted and like become a man? And mm, actually, it, yeah, it depends. There's a spectrum of people, you mm -hmm. know? There is like, you know, the parents sometimes who they interview, usually the dad, you mm -hmm. know, and be like, no, I want my son to go become a man, learn how to be a man, mm -hmm. <laughs> serve our country. Mm -hmm. And usually the mom is like, oh no, he don't need to go. He has a lot of things to do at home. <laughs> and um, I mean, the hard, the hard thing is that it's like the, <clears throat> you don't know what's gonna, it's like, you can't really plan your future. Mm -hmm. But actually in Thailand now they have like this ROTC mm -hmm. where you can volunteer for three years mm -hmm. and then you actually don't have to go to the army. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And if you really want to go, you also you can volunteer for the army and some people do that. They want to be a military officer. Um, I also want to talk about the relationship between Ek and Ja. Mm -hmm. um, how would you characterize it? What is what is their relationship like? Just like any other boyfriends. I don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't know. Uh, I was just wondering <clears throat> if there is if if it is is there this you know there's this one scene where uh, Ek's aunt says that it's um, you know it's totally fine that he dates boys, but you know that relationship will just not have a future. I will not work yeah. out. And then, yeah. To me, Jai's relationship, I mean, Jai represents just like perfection, right? So his character for me was like, how could, like, um, how does perfection actually create conflict, bring mm -hmm. conflict to one's life? The, the way people project perfection onto others are like... Well, like, even though, like, he has, he doesn't have to worry about anything. He doesn't yeah. have to worry about the, but actually this brings conflict to his life, to his own relationship, yeah. right? So yeah. actually life is not always perfect, you know, even yeah. though you have perfect life. Um, and... Uh, what was the question? <laughs> Just what the, yeah, how would you describe their relationship and what the conflict is definitely and what, um, why it doesn't work? Yeah, um, I think the, 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 probably one of the biggest mm -hmm. themes in the movie is about class. Mm -hmm. And so even though this, like, the movie is the backdrop is set against the draft, mm -hmm. but this draft hopefully highlights this issue of class mm -hmm. and yes. like, you know, you know, there you have the poor, the you know, the upper class, and the middle, you know, the middle class and the upper class, and Jai represents this kind of like middle to upper class, and how like different classes, you know, the upper class you get more choices than the poor. The poor has less choice, right? You can't bribe your way out. You have to go. Yeah. Yeah. There's this really interesting scene in the beginning when he. It's like it's just he's lighter and he's richer and he's mm -hmm. like and he just yeah he represents that. That perfection. So you think it's because of class at it in the end? That's also why his aunt kind of like. Yeah, says, she kind of says it's not going to work out. Trust me. <laughs> do you do you do you still it's think it's an issue today? Yeah. Yes. Do you experience that a lot too, or do you like do? You, me personally, especially within I don't know. Thai society, or is it? Um, I think everywhere. I think yeah. <coughs> because well, I, actually, I don't it's know. Not I, it's not really being discussed so much. I thought it was interesting that it, it was such an explicit like thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a class issue. 
where I feel like in a lot of Western countries, it's just, it exists, definitely, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. people don't want to address it. It'd be like, you know, there's social mobility, blah, blah, blah. You know, people can do whatever they want and right. achieve whatever they want, especially in the States, you know, this right. like, idea they can do whatever, you know, the American dream. Right. But that class really is an important factor people forget. Yeah, it's a huge factor <laughs> on in, in education, right? It, you know, it, anyways. So how do you, how are you how do you like the film? How is it how how is it watching it on a big screen and being at a festival in a different yeah. country? Yeah, I think two days ago was the world premiere, and I was actually a little bit nervous. I hadn't actually seen it mm -hmm. finished finished. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd seen it on like before we came, but it was a huge screen, and the theater was sold out. As um, and I, I realized this while I was making the film. Um, when you edit the film, when, when the edit is finished, then you start to add different layers. You add the sound, you know, then you're like, oh, wow, this is much better. And then you add the color, and it's like, wow, this is nice. And then you add the music, and you start to feel emotions. And I realized this last mile is the audience. And I think, like, um, the audience reaction. And I realized you really need to see the film with an audience, yes. and that actually makes the film complete. Otherwise, it's still, like, 95%. <laughs> Something yeah. is missing. Yeah, it's unfinished. Something is missing. <laughs> yeah. What did they, what kind of questions did they ask you? <clears throat> oh, what did they ask me? Why did I move to Thailand to do this film? Mm -hmm. You know, why did I spend so much of my time and energy on this project? Could you have done it like in the Thai diaspora in the States or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So actually, this is like a very, okay, people, when I told them I have the story, they're like, oh, just do it in Korea. And like, actually, Thailand, Korea, you know, the military is mandatory. Like, no other country actually has this like lottery where you just like pick yeah, for the yeah, draft. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. very Thai specific and you have to shoot in Thailand. I didn't want it to be like, you know, Thai characters speaking English. I wanted in Thai. So I moved to Thailand about three years ago, you know, took Thai, intensive Thai courses. I wanted to be able to learn to read and write and speak with actors. I wanted to be able to read the script. So, wow. Yeah. And we had a great Thai team. Everybody was Thai, actually. So now you're fluent in Thai too? No. But you could communicate your instructions and like your kind of like yep. directing role, you could play that. Yep. Okay. But also the Thai team is super talented. You know, sometimes filmmaking is not just, you can't make a film by yourself. It's yes. like this huge canvas that you have and a huge paintbrush and everyone has to pick it up, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, like, it's who is around you that actually makes the movie like, you know, wow. good. So I'm very, very lucky that we had a really great team. Great. Yep. Congratulations thank again. You. And thank you for bringing this work to this festival. No, thank you, thank you. All the best, thank okay, you very thank you. much.